everybody. Happy holidays. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time stopping by, my name is Jimmy. I've got a live trade for you today. Today was a total disaster with Thinkorswim. And as the thumbnail suggests, I'm going to show you some pretty crazy stuff. And this is further cementing my decision to move platforms. You heard me talk about it yesterday. If you didn't, I'll toss that video right up here. But I've been having delays and the fills I've been getting have been crazy slow. And I got a little more information today from the TD Ameritrade help desk or the Thinkorswim help desk as to why it was so delayed. I've been getting comments from you all telling me that you've been having the same issues. I really don't know why all of a sudden it's happening other than they must have a lot more volume. That's, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. So today I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna show you my live trade. Today was a red day for me. I took a one hour loser but I had a strange interaction with the support staff at Thinkorswim. It went in my favor, but they gave me kind of a strange answer. So I am gonna jump into that a little bit today as well. <clears throat> so this trade I have here, I just have it set up. It's on the 15 minute time frame. Um, I recorded this from this morning and what I was watching was this last 15 minute candle. I watch the high and I like to watch the low and I like to place an order to go long above the high. I usually go five to 10, like five to 10 cents above, and then I like to get short five to 10 cents below this candle. Now, something people have been asking me recently is, you know, what about if it's a small, tiny candle? Like, what if this was the last 15 minute candle? And my response to that is, I'll typically go and look for another candle that gets me a little further away. You know, if it's, 25 cents is the the range of the candle. That's, I think, acceptable for me to trade 10 cents above and 10 cents below the high and the low. But if it's like a six cent or a 10 cent candle, that's just a little too small for my trading ideas. It just doesn't seem to work as well because you can get some whipping around. But make sure you back test anything that you do. Back test it 100 times, whatever you decide to choose as your entry. That way you have firm statistics on your win rate wherever your specific entry is located. So before we get into this, I'm just gonna roll the disclaimer real quick. I'm just an uncertified dude that likes to trade the markets. <clears throat> this is just entertainment and um, just to kind of show you my live experience. So let's jump into things. I'm gonna hit play on this and you're gonna see something wild. You're gonna see something very, very wild. So as this opens up, this is 10 seconds before the bell and you're gonna see this push to the downside right out of the gate. <clears throat> and it's just bizarre the way this fill is gonna to attempt to happen. So it opens up and immediately starts getting slapped back down. At first I thought we were gonna go long, so I switched over to my long account, and then I realized we're going short. So I flip back over to the short account, and I'm waiting to see what's gonna happen. And we get this really violent push. So I'm triggered right there, right? So you're counting the seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're going on, trades going on, trades going on. I'm about to pause this. You're probably wondering what's going on. So here's the thing. Many seconds have gone by and my order is still here, right here to go short. That's my order, that's my stop loss, nothing's happened. I keep playing, nothing, nothing. I'm thinking, did I somehow get skipped like in both directions, and then I hear a chime. And look over here. I got a nice fill. That's where I wanted to be filled, but I wanted to be filled there about 30 seconds ago. And I've got three shares. So this I already know is a disaster because what can happen here now is that until this position is filled, you don't have access to the trade. You can't get out of it. You can't add to it. You can't do anything. So as I click play, you'll see me kind of watch it here to see if I'm gonna keep getting filled. And you're gonna see my shares right here go from three to 400. And then what do we go to? 420, okay, we got 20 more. I feel like we've been in this trade like 10 minutes. What else do we got here? 440, okay. 460, still not even halfway filled, 510, 513, 613, 614, 800. Oh, I'm finally full. That full fill took over 14 seconds to get me filled with just 
a measly 1,200 shares. I know traders that trade five and 10,000 share lots. They'd still be in this trade for another 10 minutes trying to get filled. So now that I'm filled and my stop loss has been rejected because I'm well back above it because there was such a massive delay, now I'm down already. So you can see I try to manage this. I'm like, I don't really know what to do. So then I think it's gonna go long. So then I, I just cover the position. And I stop out for a $437 loss. Now this is where things get interesting because I chatted in, I used the support chat and I asked for some help. And they said to me, let's take a look at the books. We'll see if there's a delay. And I said, fine. So they went to the books, they looked, they went to the trade desk. They said, yes, there was a massive delay on the fill notification. So he came back to me and said, not a problem. We're going to credit you the money back <clears throat> and close the position. So basically what happened was they wiped out this loss. They gave me all my money back. And then at the end of the conversation, he said, you assume the risk of a delayed fill if you choose to trade in the first couple minutes of the trading day, which I thought was, was mind-blowing because if I'm assuming that risk, then why would you re return my money? You know, why would you interact with me in this way? Why wouldn't you just say, we can't give you your money because you're assuming that risk? It just seemed like a really strange answer for a trading platform. All this volume happens in the first few minutes of the day. Of course, people are going to be trading there. And if you just say that we assume the risk of having a huge loss based on a delay, that's just our assumed risk, then I'm going to close my account right away because that doesn't make any sense to me at all. So we were talking through this a little bit, and I said, what makes the fills so slow? And this was the answer. The, the, the notification is what's holding things up. So you can see when I got filled, I actually had, let me back this up a little bit. I was trying to get filled at 91.51, and I got filled at 91.505, like 505. I only got a half a cent of slippage. So it's an amazing fill. It's just, it took 14 seconds rather than immediate. Because if it's immediate, I would have just gotten stopped out of this position. I would have been in profit, it hung, then it came right back, and I got stopped out. I have no problem with that, because that's my trade plan. I have a stop loss. But when the notification that's telling me this, this thing up here, until this gets to 1200, it locks the platform. I can't do anything with my AMD position until it's full. So if this trade would have took an hour, I would still be in that trade. I would still have to wait a full hour until it's full. You can't cancel in the middle of it. And you might see what I tried to do here. When I click play, right there, I hit the flatten button, trying to just get out of this position because I saw I was 400 shares short and I thought, you know what? It's already gone well beyond my stop loss. I don't want to be in this trade at all. So go ahead and just let's just crush the position and be done. And I'll take the $171 loss. But it didn't work. You can see it just turned to 400. It just wouldn't, it won't let you get out until it's full. So if I would have left this order in, you can see how it switched to 400. If I would have just left this here, once it said 1200, it would have then triggered me out. So it's a complete lockout on your position until the notifications come through saying that you're full. So I'll get off this now. That was just my horrible experience this morning. And um, I do have another platform picked out. I'm going to reveal that probably next week. And I'll tell you why I've decided to do it, why I've decided to... Um, pay for a few things instead of accepting um, free trades, commission free trades. But we'll get into all that next week. Now, after this happened, you all know that I like to place that another trade above the high. Well, I got triggered to the high, to the upside as well. So I sped this one up 20 times because it took quite a few minutes. So I'm gonna hit play and <clears throat> you're gonna see this one wrap up again and then we'll get into the next trade. The long trade. So you can see yeah, me getting out of this. So um, that feels so slow. Look how slow that is. 500, 600, 7, 8, finally full. 
and then I'm trying to figure out what to do. Like I'm, and then I'm thinking I'm going to get triggered to the other side. It's just a disaster. I just, it's just a disaster. So anyway, that was the trade. So I sped this one up. I'm in the trade. I'm actually going to show you this such a quick fill. This feels gorgeous. Watch how quickly I get filled here. Boom, I'm in. I mean, sorry, I'm out. This fill right there, boom, in immediately. Pushes up. I uh, got about $200 profit. It ends up hitting close to $350 profit. Drops back down. We actually open another candle, and you know that I'm not in trades very long, so this is a really long trade for me. It's holding, it's holding, it's holding, it's holding. It keeps acting like someone's accumulating shares at that 92 level or 9210 because it'll refill itself and then push higher, then come down, refill, push higher. And I'm waiting for the break of that first candle's high, and we get it. It goes into th 350s and just gets rejected. It could never get any momentum over and above that high. So I'm just waiting, 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 waiting. It's hanging. I'm thinking we're going to see a third candle, and then right before that third candle opens, I get this big drop, and we're out. So took a 1R loser right there, which is totally fine, um, but you can see the time. It was almost 8 o'clock um, on this trade. Let me go back here and see. Yeah, it was almost 8 o'clock on the trade, uh, which would be 10 o'clock Eastern time. And closed me out, down 1R, which is totally fine. Um, it's part of the deal, but it's so frustrating when you're getting those slow fills. And one thing I wanted to show you guys today is I just wanted to get into kind of what happened after I got out of the trade just to see what kind of day this was. I haven't seen wiki whipsaw action like this in AMD in quite some time. So this was a loser from the gate. Like there's no, AMD really hasn't moved. Like it opened today at 91.80. It's trading at 91.71 right now. And, and the market's closed because it was an abbreviated day. So as you can see, AMD did nothing. It was a disaster of a name to trade. It was just all over the place. So I imagine if any of you were engaged with AMD, you probably got whipsawed around. Drop down the comments, let me know how it went. Today was just a strange one. I did want to risk 1R as I told you yesterday because I've seen big momentum on you know holidays, like just before a holiday or just after a holiday. Nobody really expects it and then something big happens. A couple years ago, right before Thanksgiving, um, or actually it might have been the day after, it was like Thanksgiving was on Thursday and the markets were open on Friday. I sat on the sidelines and just watched some candle action, some price action, and I saw one of the biggest moves in, I wanna say it was Roku, a huge move that I would have been in on and was just sitting on the sidelines. So I said to myself at that point, don't ever sit out any days, if it's an open market day, Trade your system. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does work, sometimes they're really, really good because people will pile in. So anyway, that's what happened today. It was a red day. Um, we'll bounce back. We've got four more days to trade next week. I am a little nervous because I'm very, every time I punch the button, I'm a little anxious with Thinkorswim now. It's just not executing. And I feel like in the last week, it's gotten infinitely worse. So if you've noticed the same thing, let me know. We just got to figure out what to do. We got to figure out which platform is going to give us speedy fills and let us and let us have control of the trade immediately. You know, if I can ping a server in England in a fraction of a second, you would think that I could execute an order within one second. You know, you would think it would be quick enough that I could still engage with the trade. So that was AMD today. There was no chance of doing anything, no continuation. I wouldn't have been able to move a stop loss on anything like we could have yesterday. So today was just sort of a disaster overall. We're going to regroup. I hope everyone has an amazing Christmas holiday. Enjoy your long weekend. We'll be back at it on Monday. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're doing for the holidays. Um, I want to thank everyone again for being part of the channel. We're, we're putting the creep on that 6,000 subscriber mark, and that's really exciting. So I want to thank everyone for that. We are going to have more live streams coming soon in January, so stay tuned for that. Hope everyone is well, and we'll see you on Monday. Have a great holiday.